I have created a simple guide that you can apply to your own gameplay right away. All you'll need is your own brain and to trust me, and I guarantee you'll improve from this video. This is not clickbait and I've tested it for a long time and I've had nothing but positive feedback on it. This video is going to help so many people and I'm excited to finally share these tips with you so I can hear all about your SR gains. My name is Aten, and if you don't know who I am, I'm somebody who's known for my really big SR numbers and my educational content where I help people climb and teach them how to play the game. So with that out of the way, let me show you what I can do and let's get into the list. The list contains six concepts which are corners, cooldowns, teammates, objective check, roles, and lastly, ebb and flow. A corner is a point on the map that will separate two open line of sights, which are especially important in Overwatch 2 now that shields are gone. I'm looking at you healers. Because they are the building blocks of our success in Overwatch and climbing, because they create a ton of consistency by reducing our chance of dying randomly to the millions of things that can kill us. And I don't expect you to be tracking enemy positions and cooldowns and creating these mental maps at all. I need Let me explain a little further. Imagine you're an Ana who is sitting behind her team in the open. She feels safe, she's scoped in, pumping heals like normal, but a Rodok appears out of nowhere. You try to run to safety, but you're in the open, he predicts you, he hits his hook, you're dead, your team loses. This is a really common scenario that happens. But let's play that back and implement corners. Diana is now pumping heals into her team's line of sight. She could sell all of them as normal. However, this time when she sees the Rodog, because she's hugging the wall, she can put a directional input, instantly duck behind it, and even if the hook were to hit her, it would snap and break off and she would be safe. But what other benefits can our Ana have other than dodging threats that she's not been tracking? Every time that the Ana has to reload, she will be remaining in the line of sight of the enemy if she's not playing around a corner. So she's making herself vulnerable as she cannot even fight back. She cannot interact or heal, but they can shoot at her. So if she were going to behind that wall, she could take cover, reload, then peek back out, and she reduces her chances of getting picked immensely. Now I used Anna in this example, but the same thing can be applied to a tank that is low on cooldowns or resources and that needs to hide. Same thing can apply to a DPS. I remember this grand issue that a lot of the community was facing where they were dying a lot and they felt so bad playing support and they said the role was bad, etc. Because there were no more shields to keep them safe. Because these shields are movable walls that created this comfortable lifestyle that required no concern for their own safety. And now that shields are gone, you can quickly see why people started to feel the heat. This is why corners are so, so important and we will be coming back to them as we go through the other examples. Cooldowns are crucial for your success as an Overwatch player. Not only will playing around cooldowns assist you in your consistency in climbing, it will also teach you to recognize when others are making a mistake. While each cooldown timing differs from character to character, we will start with what they mean to Overwatch as a whole. I think that the best way to describe it is, is that cooldowns are cyclical. And what this means is, is that almost every hero will be in this cycle where they will get their cooldown, use it to fight, pull back, wait for it, when they have it up again, they'll go back in, fall back, wait, go in, fall back, wait, and it becomes a cycle, which is a very simple to understand cycle. For example, let's look at Tracer. Uh, Tracer is a hero that has three blinks and a recall, which has a very long cooldown. Damn it. If this Tracer were to engage a fight with only two of her blinks and no recall, she'll find very quickly that the enemy team will dispatch of her almost instantly. She can't dodge most of their things, and she can't really run away either, which is why the correct cycle for a tracer is for her to have at least two of her blinks and her recall, meaning that she can now look for an aggressive play or a punish and then recall out to safety. And while she's waiting for her cooldown, it doesn't mean she cannot fight. It just means she will have to respect the fact that her engaging without it will be much, much riskier. Furthermore, in this category, I would like to add that this also applies to our ammo and to our HP. All of these are resources that we want to have when we engage an enemy to maximize our strength and our chances by having as many resources as possible. However, while learning the game, it might be very difficult to keep track of all of these or look down in the middle of the fight, which is why when you reload, 
you're going to be moving behind a corner, as we discussed earlier, you're going to be able to look at your cooldowns when you're in animation and look at your HP and then go back into fighting. Now, if you get a pick or an advantage, that takes us to the next step. Now, we might all know what roles are, but I think it's really crucial to look at the obvious things and break them down. Because sometimes those can give off a lot of information or a lot of meaning that we will potentially forget in the chase of something more complex and advanced. As you know, there are one tank, two damage dealers, DPS, and two supports. Now, everyone, I want you to listen up very closely because what I'm about to say is so complicated, so complex, it would rival the intelligence of Nobel Prize winners. All right? Tanks are tanky. Yeah. Guess what? Tanks are tanky. They're really hard to kill. They have damage mitigation. They have abilities that do that. Or shields. They have larger health pools. They get crowd control. They got a new tank passive. They're beefy meat shields that are supposed to be difficult to kill. Damage dealers are often squishier units, but they have a varied range of playstyles. Usually, they have very low crowd control, but a lot of power in their kit to get a lot of kills quickly. On top of that, they have a new DPS passive, which increases their reload time after getting an elimination, which can also be triggered on assist, and they get more movement speed. Lastly, our supports. Now, these are the glue that hold everything together. You remember the really tanky tanks? Well, those tanky tanks become invincible when you add an Ana pocket, when you add insane heals and survivability. They have crowd control. They have a lot of things. They even have a lot of damage to be able to duel you. So it's incredibly tough to take down a tank that has these supports behind them. Because on their own, they're already tanky. But with them, it's, it's insane. So this is why we need to stop wasting our ammo, which is a resource. We need to stop wasting our abilities, which is a massive resource, on trying to take down tanks when we could be playing the map and looking for routes and ways to bully out supports and or kill them and or get picks. Once you start taking out supports, you will see all those tanks that you hate fall down so so quickly supports now also have their own passive which is after a period of time of not taking damage they will start regenerating their hp teammates are an unavoidable thing that we will all have to deal with on our journey to climb whether it be them feeding not grouping up together so we can all walk in as five or playing weird hero picks that we hate but we always have to remember that we are not in control of their keyboards and only in control of ours which is why i heavily encourage you to spend all that time worrying about yourself and not your teammates and making yourself as consistent as possible so we are not a part of that problem so when we have our cooldowns when we have a pick and we have a numbers advantage and we really want to engage and take space it is crucial to get into the habit of turning your screen around to look behind you to see who's alive where their resources are if they're also ready to go if they have their cooldowns this is a crucial technique that is criminally underused. And it's a really, really good idea to get into the habit of trying to gather as much information and update yourself as much as possible. Because this can stop you running alone towards the enemy team as a tank because you assumed that the healers were behind you. Now, like my teacher always used to say, assuming just makes an ass out of you and me. Now, once we get more quick at gathering information from our teammate check, we can introduce an objective to check. This is just a quick little reminder to ourselves that we need to make sure that either our teammates are on point so that you avoid the scenarios where the enemy gets an extra touch because nobody was pushing the cart or we see nine or we're not capturing uh, the king of the hill and lose a couple percent. Really do much about that. Adam in trouble. Mendo trying to run what? away. Nobody's on the are point. you kidding me again? And it's an objective based what? game where killing enemies is fun, at the end of the day, it's just a tool to increase the success of completing those objectives by removing a resistance. And lastly, we have ebb and flow. Now, I do want to put a warning out there that this is the hardest one, as this concept is more abstract in nature. There's not a very obvious examples, and it will require you to understand other fundamentals to compose an understanding. However, I will go over it, because once you do get it, Overwatch will transform into a much clearer game that you can then start to theory craft your own ideas and solutions to problems that you'll see in your games. First, you have to go over what space is. This is a term you've probably heard from around before, but it is considered widely by all coaches the sort of building block that everything else exists. It's like the root of a tree. It just spreads throughout all the other concepts. Space is the area where teams are allowed to move between. 
It's something that you can give. It's something that you can take. It's really simple actually to understand. It's just very complicated to apply. Let me give you an example. What allows you to walk out of your spawn door? There's no Reinhardt using his shield and his HP to stop you from doing so. Therefore, that is space that you can maneuver through. If you were to get to a choke, which is a tight little space that is being blocked off by a tank, it'll often be very difficult to push through as he's commanding that space from you. Now, often I like to use an example of an attacking team and a defending team. The attacking team groups up together. They will try to move through space to attack the defending team. They will use their cooldowns to do so. The tank usually goes first to create that space. The defending team then says, no, 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 you can't do this. We're going to fight back. We're going to push back. They'll use their cooldowns and their resources to push the attacking team back, but they can't really do that all the way. And so the attacking team has taken a little bit of space. They've successfully gone in, used their cooldowns, fallen back, resettled, look for a new opening. And again, as they get their cooldowns back, they push again. They try to get a pick or find an angle that the defending team isn't holding. And then they fall back around a corner, get their cooldown, go back in. And it's this back and forth, this ebb and flow, such as the waves on a beach. The wave goes in, the wave comes back. The wave goes in, the wave comes back. It's a very natural thing that the sea just does, as is the nature of Overwatch. Without this going in, attacking and falling back, it would not exist. Now, let me give you a little example of how we can apply previous concepts to this, such as a DPS one. Let's say a Genji, who is a flanker, and flanking means that you will play in the back line to assassinate, to capitalize on cooldowns or people out of position. If the attacking team is waiting for their cooldowns, getting ready to go in, and the Genji then strikes, he has desynced himself from his team. He's no longer in the ebb and flow. The enemy team focuses him down because he's in enemy territory, and he's quickly dispatched off. Our Genji player in the situation should have waited, looked through the wall, looked for his teammates, saw them go in, and then jump in himself from behind. No longer being the target, no longer being the focus, and the enemy team will have lower cooldowns as they had to use those to trade with the attacking team. You can see the difference in both scenarios. One, he gets focused down. The other, he's capitalizing off of his team's engage. Something that I've often seen with students is that when they are introduced with all this new information, they're excited, they're ready to go, and they lose. And they make mistakes, and they play slower, and they play sloppy. But I want you to know that this is a very normal experience, especially if you're less used to the game and can't gather on previous gained experience. But it's a completely normal and okay thing. Because your ultimated baseline, your level of play is probably around whatever rank you float around most of the time. When you introduce active thinking and decision making, often when you're presented with a, something that you're supposed to react with quickly, you have to spend extra time thinking because you're doing something abnormal. You're breaking that autopilot, which results in you being a slower and getting punished. However, the more you stick to it and the better you get at it, the quicker you will be able to react to that information. And eventually you will outshine that automated level that you previously had. And that is why you experience that initial drop off. But if you stick to it, I guarantee, because what I've noticed is that most people below Diamond are nowhere near having this as a baseline level of fundamentals, meaning that I'm so confident that you will at the very least get there. And this is something that you will be taking all the way through. It never goes away. You'll always need to learn it. So make it baseline. Automatically start learning the best spots to play in. Start playing around your cooldowns to get into the cycle. Start learning overwatch apply it to your hero and then when you do that and you understand this you can play any hero you want and you will improve so 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 much as a player thank you very much for giving me your time please subscribe to the channel i would really appreciate it i'm going to work hard on bringing better content give me feedback ask me questions i'm happy to help i would be love to do more of these because it's a win-win right you gain a sar and i gain your sub much love everyone good luck on the climb i'm looking forward to seeing your overwatch 2 gains